Late last night, the UN's human rights chief released a report accusing the Chinese government of possibly committing crimes against humanity against minority Muslim Uyghurs in the western province of Xinjiang. The report reiterated much of what the U.S. government and independent researchers have said about Beijing's campaign against the group. But it was the first time the accusations were leveled by the UN. Nick Schifrin reports. On the banks of the Bosphorus, Uyghur victims of Chinese detention didn't need a U.N. report to tell them what they'd survived. Can you describe for us what that detention center was like? They brought everyone in there because they called us suspicious. There is unimaginable oppression inside. Every day they'd toss us a little bread and water so that we didn't die. And every day they would interrogate 15 or 20 of us with unbearable brutality. We met Abdul Salam Mohammed three years ago. He says he was detained in 2017 in what he calls a prison for brainwashing. The 10 hours of class they would teach one day were the exact same hours they'd teach the next. The goal was to change our minds, our faith, our beliefs. Beijing has long called some Uyghurs extremists and separatists who needed to be re-educated with Chinese language and vocational skills. This is state media video. But the former detainees we interviewed and international researchers call this staged and scripted, a facade that hid what was really happening. In this drone video the U.S. believes is authentic, prisoners in blue with shaved heads are kept blindfolded and are led away one police officer per prisoner. Today's report details detentions marked by patterns of torture or other forms of cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. And it concludes the extent of arbitrary and discriminatory detention of members of Uyghur and other predominantly Muslim groups may constitute international crimes, in particular crimes against humanity. Beijing says the camps have all been closed and called the report a farce. The so-called assessment report was planned and manufactured by the United States and some Western forces, and it is completely illegal and invalid. The report's author, Michelle Bachelet, the former president of Chile, was herself detained and tortured under the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. In May, she visited China to conduct her own research, but human rights defenders criticized her for pulling her punches. I should state from the outset what this visit was and what it wasn't. This visit was not an investigation. Bachelet's term ended last night. She says she was taking the, quote, greatest care to deal with Chinese feedback and release the report 13 minutes before midnight. And for more on all this, we turn to Sophie Richardson, the China director at Human Rights Watch. Sophie Richardson, welcome back to the news hour. Last month, Human Rights Watch said that this report uh, had at its stake the reputation and legacy of the author, the credibility of her office, and the trust of all victims. Are you satisfied by the report? This report should have come out a year ago because the damage, the harm endured by Uyghurs inside and outside the country could have been mitigated. Uh, but it is nonetheless an important reflection of the scope and the scale of abuses across the region at the hands of the Chinese government, with a strong suggestion uh, that those policies rise to the level of crimes against humanity. And how unprecedented is it for the UN to suggest that the Chinese may be committing crimes against humanity? It's utterly unprecedented. Uh, it, again, it would have been helpful to have this assessment uh, a few years ago, this latest crisis in the region. Uh, took on new momentum in 2017, but we now know from leaked government documents that authorities were planning as early as 2014 specifically to commit systemic human rights violations. Uh, and so we have to look at this report and wonder what could have turned out differently if this report had come sooner. What might follow it uh, in terms of uh, investigations or government actions, do you think? Many of the issues, uh, the human rights violations the report identifies have been documented elsewhere, but it really is the imprimatur of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the office uh, she has led that lends a certain momentum and credibility that in turn places pressure on or uh, gives governments uh, necessary facts to go into a body like the United Nations Human Rights Council and start arguing that it's time to establish a formal investigation that could gather evidence and make recommendations about actual prosecutions.
and that Human Rights Council meets just, just in a few weeks. Um, on the other hand, the report does not use the word genocide, which uh, the U.S. government has used, nor does it use a number. The U.S. government says that there are one to three million Uyghurs who have been detained uh, by China. For example, Senator Marco Rubio today said it, quote, downplays the severity of the Chinese Communist Party's crimes. Do you agree? I think there's a legitimate debate about whether uh, uh, the, the report downplays uh, the scope and scale of abuses or whether it has put forward an assessment that's playing defense partly by drawing extensively on Chinese government sources in addition to having spoken uh, to victims. I think part of the office's goal was to provide governments in particular with very solid facts. Uh, and to leave out that which they could not definitively confirm so that the governments that are, that are likely to take this assessment forward could be confident that they're arguing on, on very strong analytical and factual ground. I think it's important to put an underline uh, uh, in that this report does not only use victims' testimonies, uh, it, it also uses Chinese government sources. You think that that's particularly significant? Yeah, I think that's playing good defense. Beijing's immediate response was to say that this is just a U.S. conspiracy. Uh, and I think it's hard to do that when your own government's documents are, are, are being quoted uh, extensively throughout the piece or being relied on throughout the analysis. You and others uh, in the U.S. Uh, have been sanctioned by the Chinese government for, quote, meddling in internal affairs. Are you? Well, if that's the Chinese government's perspective, it probably shouldn't have voluntarily signed up to a half dozen international human rights treaties that allow for precisely the kind of scrutiny, not just that Human Rights Watch brings to bear, but indeed the United Nations, the High Commissioner, and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, as well as the Human Rights Council. And finally, uh, it's difficult, but do you believe this report can provide uh, any kind of comfort, any kind of recognition, perhaps, to so many victims uh, and their families uh, of Chinese detention. I do think this is one of the most important aspects of this report, that finally, finally, Uyghurs around the world see at least some of the nightmare that they have lived validated and reflected by the world's premier uh, human rights agency. The key now is for governments to respond to this report and take it forward to end this nightmare for Uyghurs and to actually uh, pursue accountability and deny the Chinese government the kind of impunity it's come to expect for gross human rights violations. Sophie Richardson, China Director of Human Rights Watch, thank you very much. Thank you.